Hello and welcome to this edition of the Airport News Show, a half hour program about the Jacksonville Aviation Authority. I'm Debbie Jones, Community Relations Administrator. Well, it's time once again for our holiday travel tips. The holidays are here and we've got some updated and some old tips and suggestions to make your trip through the Jacksonville International Airport a little less stressful. And as always, I want to get right into it because we have a lot to talk about. So I want to introduce my very special guest this first segment, Mr. Ed Goodwin, who is the Federal Security Director for the Transportation Security Administration or the TSA. Welcome, Ed. Thanks, Debbie. Nice to be back. It's always a pleasure to have you and your expertise on the show. Thank you. And then also my special privilege and pleasure to introduce Ms. Siobhan Monroe, who is the Station Manager for Delta Airlines at Jacksonville International airport welcome Siobhan thanks it's good to be here well we're so glad that you could join us because as always for people who don't travel a lot the holidays are usually the one or two times a year that they do go through the airport and so I'd like to Ed start with you to sort of help people get in that frame of mind before they even leave the house to come to the airport to take their trip what are some things they need to do well uh, it, it old tips again that we've used before but they're still good tips right. my, my the biggest thing a passenger can do if they have internet access is www.tsa.gov mm -hmm. go on there and look at tips for travelers look at prohibited item list and get familiar with what you can expect at the airport also uh, what I tell people all the time when they because really your, your trip the success of your trip through the airport starts at your house and the first thing I tell people to do is, before they start packing their bag, empty their bag, completely empty it. Make sure there aren't things in there that they may have, you know, they may have been on a hunting and trip and they may have loose ammunition, things like that. So make sure that there's nothing in your bag that you're not sure of uh, before you start to pack your bag. So that's the most important part before you even start to pack. Is to empty that bag. Go to the website, tsa.gov, to see the most updated, I assume it's the most updated list of prohibited items? Correct. And that'll, that'll, that'll give you a nice start on what to expect when you get to the airport. So once they get to the airport, of course, there's the whole process of going through the screening and the security checkpoint. So what are some things, especially for new passengers who just are not familiar mm -hmm. with the process? One of the biggest things they can do is get there in plenty of time. Give themselves enough time to become familiar with the environment and then understand what the process is going to be once you get to the checkpoint to go through security. Again, being, being forearmed with information from the, from the website. And then also this year we have some new things at the checkpoint where people that maybe have only traveled a few times a year won't be familiar with. One of the things that we will institute here over the next week or so is we, what we call a family friendly lane. So for those families that have children or may not travel very much, or maybe some elderly passengers and things like that. We have a special lane where, where things are going to go a little bit slower. You can get more help and direction from TSA personnel that are at the checkpoint. And, and, and you're not hurried. You're not, you know, you don't feel like you're holding up, you know, that business traveler that might be behind you that travels three times a week and he knows exactly what he's doing. And, you know, it makes your experience, you're just a lot more nervous about it. So that's one of the big things that we're going to institute over the next week or so is a family friendly lane to where you can kind of go at your own pace and get it all finished. And, you know, especially if you have little kids running around, it's all new to them. So uh, we, we are going to try to, you know, to, to, to segregate you and put you in a lane where, where we put a lot less pressure on things that you do. That's got to be really helpful for those families with the strollers and the car seats and things that to get them through their own lane. That's got to be something to look forward to. I mean anybody that goes to the airport a lot can see that they're the most, it's the most nervous group is those people with families and kids and strollers and all those things to do and again it all starts with getting there in plenty of time to get all that done and and then you know that way you go to the family friendly lane just read and we'll have it we'll have plenty of signage in the front of the uh, in the front of the lane where you queue into the checkpoint and 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 then you know you'll be directed uh, as you get there very good now some of the other things that people will have to be prepared for is of course taking off your shoes and 
the 311. Can you go over what the 311 is? Well, the, the, the taking off your shoes part, that everybody, that's just a, a way of life here right now in, in, in where we live, uh, that your shoes are going to have to come off uh, before you go through the walk-through metal detector. Okay, as far as uh, you also need, and it's, it's really good on the website, but any liquids, gels, and aerosols that are under, uh, they all have to be under 3.4 ounces, but they should be put in a little one quart, you know, plastic clear bag, put together, and then so that way we can, and really that's just for, to help us screen all the stuff quicker and better, and it makes the line flow a lot easier. So that should all be in a bag. Again, that's kind of, that kind of information is on the website, and during the holidays we'll have people out there to help you, and if you have any questions, you just ask somebody and they'll tell you how to do that kind of stuff. So, you know, you're, you're, uh, and, uh, and as far as baggage goes, you know, you're allowed one carry-on bag and then one personal bag other than that, like, a, like for a woman would be a purse or something like right. that. Now, because it is the holiday season, gifts. What is your, what are the rules about gifts coming through the security checkpoint? The, 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 the information that we give out is, uh, please, if you can, uh, wrap on arrival, uh, you know, not, not before you go, uh, just in case that there's something in the gift that we may have to unwrap and look at. Uh, you know, we would suggest that bring the gifts, but when you get to your destination, then go ahead and wrap them if you are bringing gifts to your destination. Okay, very good. Well, Siobhan, from an airline's perspective, what suggestions would you give to passengers who, before they come out to the airport for their trip? Well, to echo, you know, Ed's comments, um, very, very important that our passengers prepare ahead of time. Um, my recommendation would be to definitely look at the, air, the respective airlines' website to see what kind of policies and procedures there are around checked luggage. Um, each airline may be different. I know that at Delta we also require you to be at the airport an hour before departure if you're traveling domestically. It's um, two hours for international and to give yourself plenty of time to make sure that you're at the airport. Um, our goal is to get you through uh, the check-in process as efficiently um, as we possibly can. Um, the other recommendation I would have is not everybody is familiar with online check-in. Um, and to check each airline's um, policy or procedure around online check-in, it makes it a lot quicker to get through the, through the airport. You can bypass the ticket counter um, and you can check in 24 hours prior to, prior to departure. Um, so that's, that's, that's something that not a lot of people are aware of. Um, during the holiday season, you know, as Ed mentioned, we do see a lot of families traveling. Mm -hmm. Um, a big, one of, one of the issues we deal with during the holiday season is our unaccompanied minors. Okay. Um, we do have a lot of um, children that are traveling by themselves okay. and um, they always have a guardian, a guardian meet them, whether it's a parent, a relative of some kind, meet them um, on arrival. Uh, we recommend that, I'm not sure if everybody is aware of this, but Anybody meeting an unaccompanied minor can actually get a gate pass at the ticket counter that will get them directly through uh, security mm -hmm. and out of the gate and they can pick up their, um, their child at the gate versus having the child come all the way down to the ticket counter. So um, they would be, that would be something that I would encourage all parents or guardians to do is to check um, for a gate pass so that they can get through security. What kind of, for the gate pass, what kind of information would the, the guardian meeting the unaccompanied minor need in order to get that gate pass? Whenever a reservation is booked for an unaccompanied minor, we take the information of the individual who's, who's picking them up. And um, we would uh, check their identification. They would bring identification. We would check their identification against what was put in the actual uh, reservation, and that's how we match them up. Okay, so they'll collect the relevant information from the person coming to meet the child before they before we give them the absolutely gate yeah. pass. Yeah. Okay, very good. Now going back to the online check-in because I've used online check-in, but always with when when I just have carry-on. Can uh -huh. you use the online check-in when you have check bags and still not have to stand in the check-in line? Well, I can only speak from Delta's perspective mm -hmm. on that, and absolutely, you can check in a bag. What we have is a system where 
once you check in online and you have a bag, we have a dedicated line at the, at the uh, ticket counter where you can drop off that bag. So all you have to do is show your ID. We um, run the, the um, bag tag, put it on your bag, and, and off you go. Now, Ed mentioned that when there are gifts coming through the checkpoint, don't wrap them. Is that the same advice for people when their bags are checked? Do you suggest that they not wrap gifts when they check their bags as well? I don't well, know if that's an airline or a TSA that would That would be primarily a TSA. Okay. Yeah, I what would suggest, suggest the same thing. Please okay. don't wrap them because, mm -hmm. again, if we do have to open up a bag, uh, and, and look inside, we'd, we certainly would prefer not to ruin somebody's uh, efforts to wrap a present. Right, because even check bags are being yes. screened, and so if they find something, whether it's checked or carry-on, then you would need to right. be and, careful about that. And in that case, Debbie, we would have to, um, you know, notify the customer and have the customer come back to the ticket counter mm -hmm. for verification and everything, so it makes it, it's, it's makes it a huge inconvenience for the customer. Oh, yeah, when you have to yeah. be pulled out to look at something yeah. in your bag, especially if you have to unwrap it. Mm -hmm. And on the TSA.gov, does it also mention what items you should not put in your check bags as well? Yeah, it gives a whole, uh, it gives a whole breakdown of things that they don't want, you know, you shouldn't put in there, whether that's, you know, anything from medical devices to, to, to medications and things like that. It's, they do make suggestions on, on whether you should carry those on or put them in your check baggage. Yeah. Okay, and back to, once again, check-in, because I, uh, I think we mentioned before, third-party check-in, just yeah. real briefly. If somebody's done a third-party reservation with, mm -hmm. like you mentioned, Travelocity, Orbitz, et cetera, what do they need to do if they're, to make sure there hadn't been a schedule change or something? My recommendation on that would be to definitely, within 24 hours of your departure, check with your respective airline to make sure that there has been no schedule change to your flight. Very often, um, if you book through a third party like Travelocity Orbits and there is a schedule change, there is no way to be notified. So we recommend, we, we recommend that you check with each airline 24 hours um, in advance to make sure that there hasn't been any scheduled uh, departure change. Okay, and that can be very, that's another way to keep people from being stressed out is Absolutely. knowing that their schedule is correct. And before sometimes they come to the, the schedule changes are very minor. It could mm -hmm. be 10, 15 minutes, but it does mean a whole lot when, when you have to check in, you know, within 30 minutes of a departure time for that flight. Right. Well, we just have a couple minutes left. So in boiling it all down, I know you said just be really prepared before you come to the airport check with the airline to make sure that you're following the pr processes and guidelines for baggage mm -hmm. and the costs of bags and things right. like that and for prohibited items and mm -hmm. packing correctly. If you were to boil it down to just one real quick item that everybody should know, what would it be, Ed? And then Siobhan, one must-do item. Must-do item at the checkpoint is uh, liquids, gels, and aerosols in a uh, clear plastic bag uh, if you're carrying them through the checkpoint, taken out of whatever you have it stored in and put uh, and, and presented for screening. Okay. What about you, Siobhan? Think of just for the thing. airline's perspective, one thing would be give yourself plenty of time to mm -hmm. get to the airport and, um, you know, time to wait at the ticket counter to get checked in so that you've got a smooth process all the way through from the ticket counter through security and out to the gates. Well, that sounds like it's pretty cut and dry for it. Give yourself plenty of time, like the Boy Scouts, be prepared, and then the stress level should be considerably less. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, Well, I want to thank my very special guest, Mr. Ed Goodwin, the Federal Security Director for the Transportation Security Administration, TSA. Thank you once again, Ed, for oh, being anytime. here. And Siobhan Monroe, Station Manager for Delta Airlines. Thank you for being our guest today. My pleasure. And I want to thank you for joining us on this first segment. Don't leave, though. We'll be right back with some more tips and suggestions to make your transition through the Jacksonville International Airport just a little less stressful. Stay right there. 80. 30. 50. Every mile brings us closer. 64. Every mile in a city near you. 75. Help us find a cure for diabetes. 100. 
join the Tour de Cure. 60. Register to ride. 36. Or sponsor a rider. 50. Call 1-888-DIABETES or visit us online at diabetes.org forward slash tour. How many miles will you ride? 25. Welcome back to this edition of the Airport News Show. On today's program, we're talking about tips and suggestions to make your holiday travel through the Jacksonville International Airport a little less stressful. In the first segment, we talked with the TSA and a representative from the airline about how to prepare for your trip even before you leave home so that you can get through the security checkpoint and get checked in for your trip in an easier fashion. Well, my next guest for this segment, I want to introduce to you to give us some more information about what happens once you get to the airport and some things you can look forward to while you're visiting. And I, this is my special guest, Mr. Brian Long, who is the Customer Service Manager for the Jacksonville Aviation Authority. Welcome, Brian. Thanks, Debbie. Thanks for having me. Well, we've gotten in the first segment, like I mentioned, the, t the whole security screening process and checking in with the airlines, but there's other things that passengers need to be ready for as they're getting, as they're taking off on their trip, and one of the bigger I items or issues is parking. So can we start off by tar talking about parking? Sure, uh, parking is important because you, you, when you plan to come to the airport, you know, you want to make sure that you go through parking quickly and easily to get into the airport and get onto your plane. And uh, we have several different options for people coming to JIA to be able to, uh, you know, to park at. Uh, we have several different lots. Um, we have starting out with our, uh, our economy three lot, mm -hmm. which is uh, uh, the farthest away from the airport, uh, the rates are cheaper, and the closer you to the airport you get, the rates get a little more expensive. And the economy three has a, uh, from, from door to door service to JIA through our shuttle bus system. So for our economy three lots, our, our hourly rates uh, for economy three are $16 a day. Or okay, the economy, okay. The economy, I think, is six dollars a six, day. Six dollars yeah. a day. For economy one and two. Right. Yeah. Mm, for okay. economy one and two, mm -hmm. and uh, we actually have a uh, uh, for our daily garage. Is it twelve dollars? I believe it's twelve dollars. Twelve dollars for our daily garage. Right. Our uh -huh. daily surface is ten dollars, mm -hmm. uh, and then for economy, it's six dollars a day. And we actually have a valet service as well for those who may want to use that uh, through Air Valet, which is twenty dollars a day, okay. and you can actually drop your car up at the valet parking and they will take it from you. And when you were mentioning the economy lot three, that's a lot that we don't normally use mm -hmm. except when it's a real busy holiday season and we anticipate a lot of parking. Right. And so um, we've already got the dates for the Thanksgiving and the Christmas use of Economy Lot 3. And do, can you just sort of go over that information with us? Sure. We, uh, we've instituted some times in our, uh, for, our, uh, for our daily surface lot. We've got some specials uh, from, uh, from Tuesday, November 25th, mm -hmm. which is before Thanksgiving, uh, through December the 5th, uh, 2008. Uh, you'll be able to come in to Economy 3 and there's a flat $25 fee for that entire period mm -hmm. uh, for, or any length thereof in it. And it's a first come, first serve basis. So uh, That can be quite a deal. It can, that can be. be quite Depending a deal. Depending on how long you stay in the mm -hmm. lot, it can be a very good deal. So, uh, you know, if you're planning on coming and you want to take advantage of that, you know, come early. Right. I definitely want to be able to uh, come in there and, uh, and one thing I want to stress with that, uh, with any of our discounts that we have going on during the holidays, is that you must pull a ticket and you, you must pay through the cashier. Mm -hmm. You can use a credit card, but you can't swipe in and swipe out with a credit card. You have to pull that ticket and you have to go in and pay out through the cashier. Okay, and that's for our discounted. That's for our discounted specials that we have going on. And we do have one discount offering that we've not had before, and that's in our daily surface lot. That's, Can you talk a little bit about that? That's correct. Uh, that's a discount of $3 per day um, for be offered in our daily surface lot, and that's from the Tuesday, November 25th through December the 5th, and that too is on a first come, first serve basis. So the normally, the daily surface lot is $10 a day. $10 a day. So for that period of time, for the Thanksgiving, and then we'll give the dates for the Christmas, mm -hmm. if you park in the daily surface lot, 
and pull the ticket right. and you can park for seven dollars a day saving three dollars a day for that period of time and that's true and also there again you do have to pull that ticket and you do have to pay at the cashier but you can still pay in cash or with a, with a credit card but you can't just credit card in and credit card out so you're actually closer to the airport and really only paying a dollar more than our economy lot that's true on mm -hmm. a daily rate it is so a very good deal it's a great deal now can you tell us what the the Christmas dates are, the December dates for that discount and for the use of Economy Lot 3. I think we've got, do we have that yet? Yes, uh, actually we've got some uh, from, uh, from 122308, which is right before Christmas, until January 5th. Uh, okay. okay. And those, those rates are the same as well for the daily surface lot, right. which is the $3 per day uh, discount. And I know we've been sort of reading off our little <laughs> cheat sheet That's here. That's right. We couldn't live without it. <laughs> exactly. But where can people go to find out this information and keep updated with these special discounts? Well, for all of our information about our airport, you can go to our website, which is www.jia.aero. And uh, don't con confused with the dot com because it's yes. dot a e r o exactly and uh, and there you can find information on travel you can you could even go on there and find out about your flight schedules see what uh, you know see what gates of flights are scheduled from and we have a lot of information and a lot of links on our website that's true mm -hmm. and the uh when you mention flight schedule if you're <laughs> leaving that day or expecting someone to come in that mm -hmm. day you can check the flight status button right. and it lists all the flights coming in or leaving that day and that way you can sort of gauge your time to get to the airport to either pick somebody up or to prepare to leave the airport. We were talking about parking and uh, but one thing we, we left out we talked we didn't talk about our, uh, our what we call our cell phone lot or our, uh, our uh, courtesy, uh, courtesy waiting, waiting lot, lot. That's and right. that's a very that's valuable right tool for people if you're expecting to pick somebody up at the airport and you don't want to park and pay you can come to our courtesy waiting lot which is totally free they have a large display there which shows all of our flight information uh, sometimes they call it a cell phone lot because usually what people do is when they see that the flight has arrived they'll call their party on the cell phone and they'll say come pick me up at uh, uh, you know at, at baggage claim or come pick me up or wherever and you'll be able to drive right up and pick them up and it doesn't cost you a thing Right. So it's a really great deal. And I, I see that lot getting more and more full as it becomes more popular and more True. people know about it because it is. It's totally free. They mm -hmm. have access to a restroom mm -hmm. on the side of the administration building. And it is located adjacent to the main JAA administration building. It is. And we've timed it. Once your party calls you and says, come pick me up. I've got my bag. I'm mm -hmm. at, the cor at the curb. Mm -hmm. It takes you less than two minutes to leave that lot and then be right there at the curb to pick up your your passenger so that's great it's that's a great amenity that's great so i think we've covered the parking mm -hmm. so once they go inside of course we've got a few new things going on at the airport we sure do we sure do we have a volunteer ambassador force which we've had for for many years and we're more than 50 people whose main job it is is to help people travelers throughout the airport mm -hmm. And before they've been scattered at, at different areas, stationed at different places to help them through security and post security and down in baggage claim. But we've actually got an information booth, which is in the walkway between the ticket counters and the main courtyard before security. And that is manned from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. by our volunteer ambassadors. And there you'll be able to find out information about what's post security. Uh, about your flight information. Uh, we even have the little baggies that yeah, you can put your stuff say, in. <laughs> if you forgot and, uh, your zip top We have bag. a lot of different things there for people to, uh, to use and for information and for people coming in. Information about uh, you know, where baggage claim is. What, uh, and uh, also wanted to mention that not only do we have our information booth, which is new for our, our ambassadors, but downstairs, Visit Jacksonville has a visitor's information booth, which has been there for many years which has information on all kinds of things going on in Jacksonville uh, and well, as well as beyond. Right. And we, believe it or not, only have a few minutes left, but I want to talk very briefly about Traveler Appreciation Week, which yes. is the week of Thanksgiving and the week of Christmas. Right. So what was the purpose behind the Traveler Appreciation Week? Basically, the design of Traveler Appreciation Week was to thank the travelers who 
put keep JA in business. That's the reason that we're here is to take care of the traveling public and we're going to have a lot of different things going on to say thank you for coming through Jacksonville International Airport and using our facilities. And I know we've got some scheduled things such as some musicians coming in and Visit Jacksonville has some of their partners coming out to the airport to do little things like drawings and spin the wheel and get a discount. So hopefully when people come through there'll be some activity or signage just at the very least signage saying thank you for traveling and definitely, welcome to Jacksonville. Definitely and it will just kind of help make their travel experience a little bit better. Okay and we've like I mentioned we got a few minutes left but I really want to I took some pictures because we've got two brand new concourses that I think are world class. They are gorgeous. Uh, they're, no, they're nothing short of spectacular and so we'll just take a quick run through of some of these pictures. This here is actually the very end of concourse A and this figure here is adhered to the glass. It's part of Gordon Huther's piece, Gotta Go. And as you can see, you can still see through the piece. There's an airplane and you can see the tree line back there. Just a beautiful, beautiful piece of art. And then we've got on concourse C, <laughs> this is the female portion of the same art piece. And these are just beautiful. The bag there that you see has a map of Jacksonville mm -hmm. that changes color with the light and your position where you're standing. So just beautiful, very, very distinctive hallmarks of uh, representing our airport. And here's the information booth you were talking well, about. That's right. In the walkway between the ticket counter and the security checkpoint. So people will know what to look for right. in case you can't walk by it. That's right. <laughs> it's right there. If you're going there. or coming, you have to go by the information booth. Exactly. And one of our ambassadors there helping a, a visitor. And part of the new concourse, we have 160-foot moving walkways in both concourse A and C. So that should be a real amenity for those passengers who are either in a hurry and need to walk a little faster or don't want to walk as far and they can take the moving walkway. Because we have so many restaurants and shops beyond security that it is just, it's right. amazing. And it's amazing to see people flying in for the first time and, and their, the look on their face is just, is just priceless because they are amazed that they're in Jacksonville. Exactly. They this is Jacksonville? They can't believe it. And a, a spa. But these are just some of the things because we're out of time. But uh, Brian, I want to thank you so much for being my guest on this segment thank of the Airport News me. Show. And with these, everything we've learned today and, and discussed should really help our passengers have a less stressful, <laughs> if not totally stress-free trip. So well, Brian Long. Well, that's what we're planning on. Thank you so much. Customer Service Manager of the Jacksonville Aviation Authority, thank you again for being here. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on this edition of the Airport News Show. We'll see you next time.